Hey folks, it's Ray at DCRamRecord.com, and today I've got 13 differences, though it's actually gonna be like 50 to 60 differences between the Garmin Venue 2 Plus and the Garmin Epix. I've been using these units for nearly two months, even side by side on rides, hikes, and more. So I've got plenty of comparative thoughts and data points. Now for many of you, you will look at these two watches and be like, yo, those are way different watches. And that is true, but there has been a boatload of you over the last week that have asked for a direct comparison between these two units to understand better how they differ. But keep in mind, these are the core differences. There are hundreds, if not thousands of like minutia differences between these two watches that just simply aren't viable to cover in a single video. So with that, let's get straight into it. The very first one is the price. Uh, the Venue 2 Plus is 449 US dollars versus the Epix is double that at 899 up to 999 if you get a Sapphire Edition. Sapphire gets you more storage, multi-band GPS, a Sapphire glass display, and titanium bezels. Meanwhile, looking at the hardware, you can see that the Epix is obviously a larger watch, uh, and it's also got five buttons as opposed to three buttons on the Venue 2 Plus. In the case of Epix, you can use the buttons or the touchscreen. You don't have to use the touchscreen at all, versus the Venue 2 Plus, you have to use both of those depending on what you want to do in the watch. Now, it's worthwhile noting, of course, that while the cases are quite different, the watch styles are quite different, the actual display in it is identical, and I'll dive into that in just a second. Another difference is the waterproofing. In the case of Epix, it's up to 100 meters versus the case of the Venue 2 Plus, it's 50 meters, though both are perfectly fine for swimming. In fact, they both have swimming modes in the watch. And then lastly, from a weight standpoint, the Epix is heavier at 71 grams versus the Venue 2 Plus is 51 grams. Now, this next category is so vast, it's hard to comprehend how different they are, and that is mapping. In the case of Epix, it has full-blown maps on it. So maps with popularity routing or basically heat maps on it. You can see where you are, you can see the trail, the topography, all that is there, ski areas, etc. In the case of the Venue 2 Plus, it, it doesn't have any mapping at all. And of course, that immediately gets into the routing and navigation side of things. The Epix can pull in routes, so you can actually follow a route uh, as you go along, whether it be from a third-party provider like Komoot or Strava, or routes that you make yourself on Garmin Connect. You can also go ahead and overlay things like Climb Pro to see how much elevation you have left at the top of a climb. And if you're traveling or something else, you can even ask the watch to give you random routes of a given distance or duration or direction, uh, just as a place to go and run for 5K or 10K or ride for even 50 or 100K. The Venue has none of that. The only thing that the Venue 2 has in terms of navigation is simply the ability to save a location that you've been to, so at the start of a run or your house, whatever the case may be, and then go to navigate and point to that direction. It then gives you an arrow in that direction. But if there's like a lake in front of you or no roads or anything like that, you've got to figure that out yourself. But just as the crow flies, your point is over there. Now, the one thing you could do on the Venue 2 to sort of like stop gap a little bit is to load one of the different Connect IQ apps up there, uh, Dynamic Watch or DW map is one that does really basic course routing. That could be an option to kind of fill that gap a little bit if you don't need all the advanced routing, but just want to be able to follow a single trail. Speaking of following, by the way, now is a great time to whack that like button or hit the subscribe button. Both of those really help out this video and the channel quite a bit. Next, we have something that the Venue 2 Plus has that the Epix does not, which is a speaker and a microphone. In the case of the Epix, it has a beeper, so it'll make little chirps and things like that when you go off course or notifications, but it can't actually like sing you a song or can't talk to you whereas the Venue 2 Plus can. The Venue 2 Plus can play music directly using that speaker. It also allows you to take calls on the watch as long as your phone is nearby. Now, neither watch has LTE in it, so both are gonna depend on your phone for things like making calls or receiving calls, but with the Venue 2 Plus, you can do that all from your wrist because of that speaker and the microphone. And that speaker and microphone quality is actually pretty decent. It's not like, you know, Bose fancy sound quality, but it's pretty much good enough for day-to-day -day usage. The next feature that the Venue 2 Plus has that the Epix does not is a voice assistant. Assistant. Uh, in this case, the way it works is you hold down that middle right button and it'll go ahead and utilize your phone's voice assistant. So in the case of an Apple iPhone, you're gonna connect to Siri. In the case of a Samsung phone, you're gonna connect to Bixby. In the case of every other Android phone, you're gonna go ahead and connect to Google Assistant. From there, you can talk to the watch, ask it a question using that microphone on the watch, and they'll give you an answer back using the speaker. It's currently cloudy and 43 degrees. Expect rain starting in the morning. Because the Epix lacks a speaker or a microphone, it's never gonna be able to do that in this particular hardware. Next up, we have battery life. And this comes in a kind of a core few flavors. Uh, the first one is the always on mode smartwatch. So the display is always on as long as it's on your wrist. In that case, for Venue 2 Plus, 
you're looking at about two to three days versus Epix sits at about six days. Both those numbers are true based on my actual testing. If you go to gesture based modes so that the display is off when your wrist is down, displays on when your wrist is up, then you're looking at about nine days or so for Venue and about 16 days for Epix. And then finally you get into the GPS territory, how much GPS battery life you have. Of course, that's gonna depend on a lot of what functions you're using and what satellite modes and stuff like that. But these charts right here kind of put those things in perspective side by side. And of course, one of the main drivers of that battery life is this AMOLED display. Uh, so let's talk about that. In the case of both these watches, they use the exact same AMOLED display. It's the same but 1.3 inch display. It's just the fact that the case on the Epix looks so much bigger. That display has 65,000 colors as well as a 416 by 416 resolution. So while the display is identical in terms of the actual hardware, how they use them differs a little bit. In fact, the most obvious difference is in sleep mode. In the case of both watches, they have a do not disturb mode at night. So it's say like 10, 11 p.m they'll automatically shut the display off unless you press a button. But with the Epix, they actually have a sleep watch face as well. So that means in the middle of the night, if you tap that button to see the time, it won't blind you because it's got this much dimmer watch face there. Very similar to what an Apple Watch has. But the Venue 2 Plus doesn't have that. It's just gonna show you a regular watch face that kind of regular brightness and kind of sort of blind you a little bit. Now I talked to Garmin about this and said, hey, when is this gonna get that? And they said they're considering it, but there's no particular promises on when or if that'll happen. And beyond that, there's a lot more customization on the Epix display in terms of how it reacts to different scenarios. You can customize, for example, all the exact days of the week and how the sleep mode differs on those days versus other days. A lot of things in that realm where you just get more depth of customization of brightness and features on the Epix than you do on the Venue 2 Plus. Note that both these units have always on display modes and both units are equally easy to see in both dark conditions as well as even bright sunny daylight. Here, for example, out in the middle of the desert sun. Now, anytime we talk about these sort of displays, there's a question about burn-in. Burn-ins where you keep a very bright image on the watch for an extended period of time, hours or even days, uh, and that can result in the screen burning those pixels in. Now we saw burning on the original Venue, but we haven't seen anything yet on the Venue 2, which is the exact same display as the Venue 2 Plus, and it's about, about nine months or so. Might be a bit early there, but I think Garmin's done a bunch of things that have kind of gone to mitigate that. Of course, ultimately we won't know for a while, probably even another year or so, but I think for normal usage in these watches, I'm not personally concerned about burning uh, of the displays. Next up, we've got sport profiles, and this is where things start to really shift towards the Epix, being more focused on sport sport than the Venue 2 Plus. Both of these units have all the core sport profiles. They have things like cycling and running and even downhill skiing. However, the Venue 2 lacks sport profiles like open water swimming, and it also lacks triathlon or multi-sport mode, meaning you can't have a bunch of sports in a single activity. And then from there, you get into sport profiles, and the world is really your oyster when it comes to customizing those on the Epix. You've essentially got unlimited data pages and customization with virtually limitless data fields, up to eight data fields per page on Epix versus only four data fields per page on the Venue 2. In the case of the Epix, you have things like elevation and graphical charts and compass and plenty more I'll talk about in just a second. Um, versus the Venue 2, you just get three pages and a heart rate chart to work with. Further, the Epix alongside the Phoenix 7 are the first watches from Garmin to support the phone-based configuration of all these data fields. There are some things that you can tweak with the Venue 2 from your phone, but nothing in the realm of what you can do on the Epix from your phone. Now, despite all those differences on sport profiles, when it comes to things like structured workouts, they're actually very, very similar. You can download structured workouts to both units they act in relatively the same way, uh, and you can go ahead and create those ahead of time on Garmin Connect. There is a difference, though, that in the case of the Epix, you can create an interval workout directly on the watch and customize that, versus on the Venue 2 Plus, there's only a handful of pre-canned interval workouts you can do. Otherwise, you have to customize them on the app and then push them to the watch. Now, digging even deeper into the sort of sport differences section, you've got sensor support. Both these watches support AMP Plus and Bluetooth smart sensors, so you can pair it to a cycling cadence or speed sensor. You can even pair it to a cycling radar or lights on both watches. You can also pair it to heart rate strap on both watches. But in the case of the Epix, it also can pair it to smart trainers and cycling power meters, as well as get more advanced data from different sensors too. So for example, in the case of Epix, it can pull in skiing power from cross-country skiing. It can also get running dynamics information like vertical oscillation and ground contact time if you have the right Garmin sensors. And in mountain biking mode, you'll get things like jumps and grit and flow. Uh, so a bunch of just advanced metrics that'll measure all the time that the Venue 2 Plus simply doesn't do. And going even further when it comes to things like training, the Venue 2 Plus is very much about just do your workout today and then get on with your life. Versus the Epix is about training and tracking that entire training load and recovery process. So for example, when you finish a workout in the Venue 2 Plus, it says, hey, here's just one page of stats, how far you went, the calories burned, your distance, the time, etc. all that kind of basic stuff. Versus the Epix is going to give you five pages on the watch itself 
with your training load, what that workout targeted from a training focus standpoint, how long your recovery time until your next hard workout, uh, where you should be doing your next workout from a zone perspective, all that kind of stuff is tracked here as well as on the app after the fact. The Epix also has things like daily suggested workouts for running and cycling, so give you an exact interval workout for that day based on your training load and your recovery time and your sleep and all kind of the behind the scenes sort of things. And then during that workout, it'll even track your stamina. So say, hey, at this particular intensity, uh, you can last this long from a distance or duration standpoint. So if you're going out and running a marathon, you look at that in the first couple miles and say, hey, this particular pace is sustainable for the distance I want, or it's not sustainable for the distance I want. And none of those features are available on the Venue 2 Plus, but those features are available on other watches that I'll talk about later on at the end of the video. So you don't have to spend this much to get some of those features. Next, swinging back into hardware for a little bit, the Epix has the new multi-band GPS or dual frequency GPS. This is sort of like pinned as the holy grail of GPS accuracy. And in some cases that's true, in other cases, not so much. For day-to-day -day usage in most scenarios, you're not gonna see much of a difference. Where you tend to see a difference in day-to-day -day accuracy is around trickier scenarios. For example, just two nights ago, I was running around some buildings, relatively tall, about 15 or so stories, and you can see that the Epix tracked better around those buildings, and we're not talking a huge amount, we're just talking a handful of meters off. But again, this is one of those scenarios where it's just incrementally better uh, in some of the more challenging scenarios. I wouldn't let that be a deciding factor today, but I think like a year or so down the road as this technology improves, because it's relatively new, uh, that might be a much bigger impact on things. Next, there is music. Both watches are virtually identical from music capability standpoint. You can download offline music from Spotify and Amazon Music and Deezer, put it on the watch, your own MP3 files, podcasts, etc., and then play it back using Bluetooth headphones. However, in the case of the Venue 2 Plus, you don't actually have to have Bluetooth headphones at all. You can use a speaker if you want to. And then inversely, in the case of Epix, it simply has way more storage. Uh, it's got between 16 and 32 gigs of storage, depending on which version you bought, versus the Venue 2 Plus has just four gigs of storage. Still, keep in mind, that's like five to 600 songs worth of music on your wrist, uh, which for workout purposes is probably plenty for most people. Next, we've got another category that's relatively similar, which is the optical heart rate. Both units use the exact same Garmin Generation 4 Elevate Optical Heart Rate Sensor. This heart rate sensor is capable of doing things like 24 by 7 heart rate and workout heart rate, respiration rate, uh, and other features like stress and body battery. All that stuff is identical between these two watches. And in fact, both watches have a pulse ox to get your blood oxygen levels, and it can do that both on demand as well as 24 by 7 and just at sleep, depending on which mode you choose. However, with the Epix, you could also lay your altitude over that over time, so that's useful if you're high altitude hiking or high altitude scenarios where you may be tracking that. Uh, but both watches also have the health snapshot feature, so that's identical, and that goes ahead and gets you all those metrics into one kind of like tidy little package that you can print out and give to your doctor or something like that. Finally, both watches have various emergency functions, so they differ a little bit. Both the units can go ahead and have crash detection, so if you crash your bike or uh, fall while you're running, it'll go ahead and notify your friends and family. Both units have the ability to go ahead and do a notification of someone else if you're feeling uncomfortable, like in a dark parking lot or something like that. And then both units have the ability to do live tracking. Uh, so send a link to your friends and family showing you exactly where you are the entire time. Now, all those features do require your phone being nearby because again, there's no cellular or LTE in this. But in the case of the Venue 2 Plus, it can also go ahead and make a phone call on your behalf uh, using voice. So it can even call 911, for example, uh, and use a speaker or the microphone with that. Versus the Epix is just going to do text messaging and email alerts. Inversely though, the Epix can connect to something like the Garmin InReach. This is a satellite communicator, so uh, you can go places where there's no cellular signal at all, for example, like the middle of the ocean or Alaska, wherever the case may be, uh, and use satellites to connect back and forth uh, with this and the watch. So it's kind of two paired together, uh, but this can also be operated by itself, so you don't necessarily have to have a watch uh, to use this. And of course, that's where you start to see some of those core differences between those two, because the fact that this is designed for that outdoor adventuring versus the Venue 2 Plus is designed more for the day-to-day -day sort of mainstream audience. Now, ultimately, these are very different watches, but they're also very capable watches. I could use either of these two watches to go out and train for a marathon, a uh, fast marathon with structured workouts and all that kind of stuff, just fine. I could use both of these watches to go for a hike, just fine. Where you get to those differences, as I mentioned, are things like following a course or getting the advanced elevation data, the advanced metrics, all that stuff you're going to see on the Epic series that you're not going to see on the Venue 2 Plus. Still, you don't have to buy a $900,000 watch to get those same features within the greater Garmin lineup. Garmin's got watches that cost half as much. For example, the 945 has almost every single feature I just mentioned, and it costs half the price of the Epix. 
The 745 costs $100 less than the 945 most of the time, and it's got almost all of the same features again, minus just the map portions. And if you're a runner, you can get all those same advanced running features on watches that cost half the price of the Venue 2 Plus. And then inversely, if you're looking from an endurance sports standpoint, you'll find companies like Coros and Polar and Sunto have way better options at that two to three hundred dollars price point for endurance sports uh, than Garmin has at that price point. Anyways, hopefully you found this video interesting and useful. If so, consider whacking the like button again at the bottom there or hit subscribe for plenty more sports technology goodness. Things are just getting warmed up this year. With that, have a good one.